we are back at the beautiful Wittmannskloof Conservancy where a complete transformation has taken place. After almost a decade of severe drought, the rain has come and rivers that haven't flown in years are coming down in torrents. Suddenly what used to look like this now looks like this, this looks like this, this looks like this, and this looks like this. For the past few years we've had it quite easy as the monkeys have had very limited space to hide and have had to travel greater distances to find water so we've been able to identify them and target them with minimum effort and while it's great to see the game and livestock flourishing again we know that we're in for a really tough time with the monkeys who can disappear in the long grass like ghosts despite that we know that we are in for an awesome week ahead as we begin to settle in for this season of the Oxwagon Dogs. Strap yourselves in, it's going to be awesome. It's always a good feeling to arrive back at the Oxwagon camp and we hardly even recognize this place with all the greenery around us. Of course we were itching to head out for our first hunt but our priority was to settle in and get some preparation work done with our rifles. <laughs> That's how I feel also. <laughs> Perfect. So, um, where do I start? What a transformation. <laughs> this place looks completely different, um, which is really nice. I have a feeling we're going to struggle a bit from a hunting perspective. Um, the monkeys have so much food now, uh, natural food, that they're going to be up in the mountains and we're probably not going to get many on this trip. But um, man, what a great opportunity for the farmer. Lots of rain coming down, rivers flowing. Uh, it's exactly what they needed, so really happy for that. But let's get everything unpacked and let's start settling into our, our home for the next few days. Of course, I can't resist taking a pot shot at an English Sparrow, which is a bit of a mismatch for the kind of power output my Impact Mark II is producing. But these birds are invasive and the farmer doesn't want them near the camp. Nothing like some good target practice around the camp. <laughs> Maybe a little bit windy, but when you've got 75 foot pounds uh, at your disposal then a little bit of wind at that distance doesn't make any difference whatsoever day one at the uh, oxwagon camp is normally a really important day um, because it's where a lot of the preparation happens. Now, when you come out here and you've driven on a rough road and you know things might have got bumped out or you're simply facing um, altitudes, temperatures, conditions that are not the same as we are at home, you need to take the time to sit down, um, do some shooting at different distances and make sure that what you predict um, your data is, is gonna be is actually what it is. <laughs> so, um, what's the word, validation. Um, so we've got a few guns here today. I guess I'll show you this one first because you'll know it quite well. It's the Matt Dubber Slugger uh, that I did with Utah Air Guns with the beautiful green um, Cerakote. But I have changed this a bit. Um, I've got the Hein Froman barrel tension on here. This is still a 700 millimeter barrel, but it looks really short. And that's because with this barrel tensioner, I've also um, put on a reflex silencer which only extends about what's that maybe five centimeters past the end of the muzzle which is really nice and short a friend of mine just made this for me and it, it kind of fits really well with the 
with the carbon on the barrel tension. I don't know, this just makes it really rigid. But aside from that, I've got a, an Element Nexus on top, which will just give us really crisp scope cam footage and allow us to, to dial a long way up. Um, and then I've swapped out the kind of butt pad setup I had on here prior to this with a, a very simple Sabre Tactical bag rider just to reduce the weight. So this is now a much shorter, lighter setup than we had before. Um, it's pushing 34 grain javelin slugs at about a thousand feet per second. So it's a lot of energy, it's about 75 foot pounds of energy. Um, so for this lightweight, compact setup, it's a lot of power and it's gonna do the job pretty well. Uh, I do also have this, which is Impact M3, which is slightly shorter. It's a 600 millimeter barrel. It's got a Huggett shroud on it. Um, hopefully the shroud holds up with this higher power. Um, if it doesn't, then I'll, I've, got a, I've got a normal shroud and, and Donny FL silence I can use, but it should hold up. And this one we've set to, uh, to shoot 26 grain slugs at like nine, actually about a thousand feet per second. So it's similar to this. It's just shooting 26 grains instead of 34. Big power difference. But 26 grains still hold their own pretty well and this will give us a, quite a few more shots per fill. Now I do have another M3 but I'm not going to show it to you because it's got a scope on there that has not been released yet so I can't show it to you but the other M3 has got the 800 millimeter barrel and you might see it later in the series but for now we're going to stick with the shorties they should do the job pretty well. And on top here I've got the 4-16 to helix it's a really good match for a compact gun like this and 16 times is, is more than enough magnification. In fact, I actually prefer it over anything higher because uh, you want a decent field of view as well when hunting animals like monkeys. And then lastly, the heaviest one and the longest one here, the uh, PTE 220. Uh, 22 caliber, but over 100 foot pounds. <laughs> 41 grain slug at blitzing speeds. This is more for sort of, for fun, um, we will hunt with it, hopefully, but because it's not a repeating rifle with a, with a magazine and because you only get a few shots per fill, it's probably going to be something, you know, we might use it for dussies and stuff like that, but it's more of a, it's more of a long range target gun, extremely accurate, extremely powerful, and it's a lot of fun to use and really a work of art. So we get, we'll use this as well, but I think the impacts will be the main hunting setups. Let's prepare them. One of the tricks I have up my sleeve for finding a fast firing solution is the Sig Sauer Ballistic Rangefinder, which as you can see has completely replaced my turret tape. You'll see here that when I range at 99 meters with a 2 degree incline, it gives me 2.45 mils of elevation. It's pretty cool and you can find the link for this in the video description. You'll also notice that there is an aperture ring on my Nexus, which reduces the effective objective diameter to around 30 millimeters. This is something I'm experimenting with to just get better scope cam footage. I'll discuss this in another video, but basically it increases my depth of field and makes it easier to get my footage in focus. This does come at the expense of light transmission though. Ooh, it's accurate. This is so accurate. To find a little stone. Try and knock a little stone there. <laughs> awesome. I have to say that while the M3 with the 600 mil barrel and the other M3 with the 800 mil barrel are awesome guns, I think on this trip it's all going to be about the old green machine. Uh, that Impact Mark II has been indestructible um, and with all these changes it's now not only powerful but also compact. So I'm really looking forward to using this. Um, we just did the calibration with the SIG BDX rangefinder. I ranged 99 meters. It told me to, do, to dial 2.4 moles. Dial 2.4 moles and just drilled exactly 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 where I aimed. So that's what you want and uh, these two match as well. Look at those two colors. I think it's a sign.
With all the boring stuff done and dusted, it's time to head out for a quick afternoon hunt. Only about a kilometer from the camp, we get our first opportunity as a troop of monkeys appears in the bushes. I could have drilled this monkey, but I see she's carrying a baby, and I decide to rather let her be. You can see just how challenging it is with all the vegetation to pick a target, but I get a very small window of opportunity for a clean shot, and I make it count, having to hold slightly over what I dialed for a solid 80 meter shot. Perfect. <laughs> Well, amazingly, the uh, first monkey of the trip is down. It's windy today, monkeys are scarce. It's just so thick that they're probably everywhere, but you don't see them. They, they have this thick, you know, leafy vegetation they can hide in. Um, and there's no need for them to come towards the farming areas for food because they've got plenty of food up in the mountains. But despite that, um, came around a corner, saw some monkeys in the long grass. Um, followed them as they ran. I ranged, uh, I think it was about 65 meters, um, but then they ran a bit further. So after dialing for 65, I actually had to hold a bit over, but um, ended up smashing this one. And there you go. First monkey down. Super happy with that. And uh, yeah, maybe we can recover that slug and uh, see how it performed. That'd be quite interesting. But super happy, and uh, hopefully, it's a, a sign of good things to come. Monkeys with air guns, very challenging, but glad to get this one down. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to get the slug out. Um, it went in the front of the head, out the back. Perfect headshot. Um, could feel the skull was completely cracked as well, so there was obviously quite a lot of hydraulic shock and pressure pushing outwards, but slug passed straight through, and we're not going to get it out. Maybe next time. The drive through Vitmos Kloof follows the Vitmos River, which up until now hasn't really been a river at all. To see it flowing really puts a big smile on my face, and with February being the hottest month of the year, I get the feeling it won't be long before Nicole and I decide to take a dip in a rock pool somewhere along the way. It's eerily quiet this evening with very few animals showing themselves, and I know they are there, but they're just so well hidden in the thick vegetation that the chances of actually seeing them are quite slim. But hey, with views like this, we're happy to just be out here. Right, so there's a little body of water down there that's pretty far. I want to show you just how quickly these slugs get down at those distances. If I range there, 240 meters, so that's 13.2 mils. Then 13.2. Now, Nicole, zoom in there on that on that body of water down there. I'm going to hit record, so you can see the scope cam also. I just want to show you how quickly these slugs get down there. You on it? Yep. <laughs> And you can hear it from that distance. I'll do it one more time. Pretty insane. When you start shooting puddles, it's probably a sign that you need to call it a day. With the light starting to fade and the weather looking a little bit ominous, we make our way back towards the camp and prepare to wind down. It's uh, just started drizzling a bit, and I think the rain might pick up. So we're going to leave the normal Boma fireplace out here, and we're going to rather make a fire inside and cook inside on the fire. Got some nice steaks, and I would not want to waste them in a pan. So <laughs> we're probably going to take the bride grid and put it out over the fire inside and just cook inside tonight. But uh, yeah, unfortunate about the rain, but I think it'll clear up by tomorrow, and we can get back to business tomorrow. Funnily enough, it's the camp that provides us with the hunting opportunity that we were looking for as a starling, which has been nesting in the roof of the camp, presents us with a shot, and the M3 comes out. Here you go. 
26 grain javelin out the M3. Takes its first victim. 55 meters, uh, very straightforward. Super accurate gun, good size slug for birds like that. And she's pretty flat, so got to somehow with that. And another house sparrow disintegrates, this time with a 26 grain slug out the M3. Anton comes over to say hello and we spend some time discussing plans for the next day. Anton will be taking us out to some new spots to try to get some dussies and monkeys and of course we are always grateful for the local knowledge. Right there. With the coals ready though, it's time to get cooking. Something tells me that this is going to taste great. Dinner tonight. Um, we are indoors because it is raining outside. Um, hopefully that clears up. But tonight we've made a nice fire inside and cooked some delicious steaks that have been marinated for a, mm -hmm. probably a day or so beforehand. Amazing steaks. Yeah. And we've got some gorgonzola cheese that will melt over them. So looking forward to it. Just Welcome to Vitmos Kloof and enjoy the rest of the series. <laughs> Coming up in the next episode, we'll be heading to some spots we've never visited before with Anton as our guard and taking some fantastic long shots at dozens and monkeys. It's time for the green machine to remind us what it can do. And let's not even talk about the recovery operations in the long grass. In the Congo Highlands. That is an adventure in itself. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new uploads and we'll see you then.